Hey guys, long time no video in English. Uh, I've been spending the past six plus months working on Easy Rust in Korean because Korean, it's, uh, it's a lot harder to learn Rust through Korean because there aren't many resources and then uh, the resources that are in English, of course, you know, most people will not be fluent in English and so how do you work with that? And so uh, that's what most of my focus has been on recently. But uh, over the past while, there's been uh, changes to Rust itself, a lot of uh, a lot of new things that are pretty cool, and also uh, I've been a full-time Rust developer for a year now, and as I do that, I get uh, ideas for new things that I want to talk about. And so here are the topics, most of them. There there should be some more as well, but off the top of my head, this is what I I've been uh, recording in Korean that I haven't done in English yet, and a lot of people have noticed and asked, you know, why isn't this uh, Video available in English yet and so I'm going to do this and it'll probably end up being about 20, 20 new videos maybe 30 but we'll see what happens and uh, this might be the order it might not be but uh, Surti will probably be first so Surti everybody knows Surti that's well most people know Surti if they're using Rust that is if you have like a request coming in in JSON and you want to turn it into a Rust type or the other way around so Surti is pretty, uh, pretty uh, indispensable for that then there are two, uh, three things here. So these uh, these two crates are about static. If you want to have like a, uh, a static that you can put a mutex around or just um, a uh, static that is not um, a, like something that has an allocation that you can't do in a static uh, context. Um, so in for in Rust, you can only have like uh, things with, with no allocations. And so that's pretty simple simple types, but uh, you want these these two cells, uh, these two uh, crates let you have these uh, lazily evaluated statics. So they, uh, they're static, but they start uh, when you first, uh, when you first start accessing them. So they don't, they're, they're like const, but they, const are statics, but they, uh, uh, they don't have to actually happen in a const context. So they kind of let you cheat the system there. And lazy static is actually the more lazy way to do it and then once cell is more this one might be part of the um the standard library eventually and it's kind of similar but it's uh, a little bit different uh but we'll look at that later and then also here mutex uh is const this is um rest 1.63 is coming out in about two and a half weeks and this will actually let you do a lot of the stuff that we've needed uh, lazy static and the once cell crate for so if you have um the mutex new uh, read write lock and uh, convar those uh, those three are going to be const functions which means you can take uh, you can make one of those uh, without a uh, lazy uh, static crate you just um, do a mutex new and then you put something in it that doesn't have an allocation and that can be a global variable which is pretty cool another one this is also coming up in 1.63 which is scoped thread so you have threads that are inside of a scope and that means that uh, regular threads, you don't know how long they're going to last. They could last for the whole life of the program. So anything they take has to be static. And then you have to use that uh, that move keyword and then uh, take like an, an, an arc and ARC uh, atomically reference counter. And then you have to like clone it and put it in there so that it can take full ownership. But scope threads, they only live inside of a scope. And that means that they can just uh, borrow uh, immutably or immutably with the same rules that you use for everything else in Rust. So that is pretty cool. And uh, let's see, something else I was going to mention about them, but I forget. But that's coming out in, in two and a half weeks. As, oh yeah, scope threads, I guess they were originally in Rust, like version one back in 2015, but then there was a, there was like a loophole where you, I forget the exact details, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't sound. So they had to revert it. And then 63 versions later, we are getting scoped threads. So that's cool. I didn't know about uh, Rust back then, so I haven't been, I haven't missed them, but uh, I guess a lot of people have. And then we have, um, anyhow, in this era, these crates are for error handling. And anyhow is like a quick error handling. It's, um, We'll get into that later. Uh, this error is a uh, crate that it's kind of like anyhow. Well, it's okay. It's not like anyhow, but it, it's made by the same person. It's more like if you've been using anyhow for a while and now you want to have some uh, proper error types and this error makes it uh, 
a lot uh, easier to do than uh, implementing all the um, everything yourself. So usually you, um, if you're when you're writing code, that's my cat there. Uh, you start with um, you start with just unwraps everywhere, and then eventually you might uh, bring in anyhow, and then that'll help for a while. And then you'll make the, your own error type with this error, and then you'll have something more proper. And then a related subject to that is downcasting, which is where you have, say you have like a dyne error, and then you want to turn it back into a concrete error type error. The error trait lets you do that. And then there's also a type called dyne any, and it also lets you downcast, and that's for pretty much any anything you make, almost anything you make in Rust, unless it's a, um, uh, unless it's a reference, basically, we'll have the dyne any by default, and you can use that to turn something to an, into a dyne any trait object, and then do whatever you want with it, put it into a vec or whatever, and then you can pull it back and then try to turn it into a concrete type. And then on top of that, there's some error handling tips, just maybe in general with uh, all, all this together. And then we've got request. Request is uh, just a just a regular crate for sending requests, like um, if you want to get a website or uh, send a request to a server or something. So, so you use uh, request, and the reason why I have it here is because uh, request is async by default, and that gets us into async request, and that's into async rest, and that's probably a good way to do it because um, I've noticed the uh, the the material on async rest usually starts with the with the theory and you know how async works and how you have like um, you've got pulling then you've got the waker and you've got all this stuff whereas in daily life you usually encounter async uh, rust when you start using something like request and then all of a sudden it says hey this needs to be uh, async an async function and you make it an async function to use this await keyword and then it says hey um, you have to uh, make this main as make this async as well, and then you end up making the main function async, and then it tells you you can't do that, and then you need this runtime, and everybody brings in Tokyo as the runtime, and and then so it'll be kind of like the reverse of how you um, how most uh, books talk about async. So it'll be what do you do when you start seeing async? How do you just make it work, and then after that you'll uh, it'll start getting into um, what async actually is. So first just um, getting your async code to compile and then going from there. So yeah, those are the plans for now. Um, and so I guess I'll, I think I'm going to go with Surti first and then probably, yeah, probably the, I think the these first five, I'll do them in order and then after that I'll, I'll think about it, but uh, it should be basically in this order. Oh, and also I'll, I'll probably make about maybe two maybe three videos a week so it won't be as frequent as before but there's not as much to record anyway so it uh, should be all right so i'll see you guys in the next video